Hey guys, welcome back to Man Time. Today's episode, I don't know, I don't know why I do it to myself. I go out and I buy these junky saws. I found this one at a uh, at a pawn shop for a hundred bucks. Um, this looks like, what does this look like? I don't know, you tell me what this looks like. Um, I am thinking, let's see, 4043 Husqvarna 61. Yeah, I'm not seeing any dates on here. It looks like a later model of the 61 series. Um, it, it's in pretty rough shape. The uh, the AV mounts are completely gone in it. You can see here, I guess, right here. See what's going on there? Yeah, so the AV mounts are completely out. Um, I noticed it was missing some of the bolts for the jug. I'm just getting into this, so uh, <laughs> I'm so excited. I got a saw to build. I got a new piston for it. I've got a new jug, uh, 52 millimeter. We're going to port it. I've got a Fordham around here somewhere with a bunch of new bits. I've got the timing wheel. We're going to do the whole thing. It's going to be fun. So uh, stick around. Welcome to man time. Let's dig into the 61. Somebody called me out um, for not showing kind of the simple first things I do on a saw. And, and that's good, you know, not everybody knows, you know, mechanical things. And um, the first thing I do with a saw like this, I empty all the f uh, fluids out of it, um, at least the gas. And I can tip, uh, sometimes the fuel filter will come kind of just tumbling out of there. But otherwise, I'm, I'm looking in there to see and look at it and if you can't get a good look at it then you can you know grab a piece of baling wire or um, something that has you know a hook on the end of it and then get that fuel filter up and uh, to a spot where you can kind of grab it out of there but this one um, I've already looked at it it looks I mean it looks clean and um, oh, well. <laughs> Now I definitely got to work on it because the fuel filter actually came off um, the end of the fuel line. So, ah, there, there we go. But you can see there, I mean, it's got a little discoloration, but these fuel filters, I mean, they can take a licking and, and keep on ticking for the most part, but... Yeah, that one that one may need to be replaced. It's full of fuel and it's not like leaking out of there. I may replace that one. But beyond that, um, the fuel filter actually coming through the case here, it's uh, this grommet is not is not seated in anything and it looks like it's broken. And I could smell gas coming from this thing as I was driving it home. Um, so I mean, it's got it's got fuel issues, but I'm going to separate the tank anyway to replace all the AV mounts on here. I think I'm going to do that first, um, and I, I wouldn't normally do a compression check on this one, but again, somebody was asking, you know, the first things you do when you're digging into a saw like this, um, and I haven't even tried to run the saw, but. Um, let's see, stop, choke in, uh, decomp. See, this this has got to be an aftermarket cylinder. Um, there's no decomp. All it says is A. I mean, it, when we get it off of there, we'll take a closer look at it. It's got some numbers on the side of it. Maybe we can determine kind of what it is from there. Oh! Holy Lord. All right, well, uh, let's see here, we're sitting 140-ish. Yeah, 1, 135, 140. So, I mean, that's good. It's not, I mean, if it was like sitting at, you know, 160 or something, I would feel kind of bad about replacing it, but. Okay, um, let's see here. I'm just going to take off a few things just to get started. 
put our fuel cap back on here. And just kind of the first couple things I'm going to take off. I, I've been watching some videos on the correct way to take these apart. And I guess the easiest way to get this mess off the, the front of it here is just to take the jug off. Let me start over. <laughs> Disconnect everything and take the jug off as, as the assembly here. Um, and then you can just real easily, it's got those two same through screws that the 365 had that holds this whole mess together. Um, there's actually an extra bolt right here that's holding um, this intake boot on, or this manifold. And so we got to make sure to take that out too. But let's see here, let's just start by taking the exhaust off. I see people working on these in their shops and I, I'm just like, oh my god. There, there was so much dirt and crust and filth on this thing. Um, we'll probably have to go back in the shop here in just a second because it's winter time and I'm not really a cold weather person. But All right, so there we go. First, um, this, this bolt right here is just stripped out. So we've got uh, a strip bolt there. We might be able to go up a size. Otherwise, it may be... No, nope, definitely not going up a size. So let me see if I can find a left-hand drill. And we can drill that out of there. And I need a pick to get the gunk out of these. But yeah, it's, it's nice working on this stuff outside when, uh, when you can actually blow it out. I mean, more more damage here. I mean, this is this is going to be turd saw territory, you know, hundred dollar pawn shop saw, you know, pieces missing, uh, bolts rounded over. Um, it, it's going to be a chore getting this thing back together, and uh, with, with you know, I'm going to have to get new hardware for some of this missing stuff. But uh, anyway, so let's uh, let me just get it taken down to the point where. We've got the jug off and all this assembly off the back, and I'll figure this out um, to get that off of there. And then we can uh, we can go to show you putting a timing wheel on it and all that stuff. Well, that was uh, a whole lot of fun. I mean, one of these saws you're getting into it, um, especially one like this where you you know don't know anything about it. You know, it's gonna it's gonna have a lot of damage. <laughs> I mean, just ridiculous damage. Oh, I need a new tensioner screw, too. That one's all freaking warped in there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but... I mean, the parts list on a saw like this just gets, you know, longer and longer as you uh, as you look at it. But the, the exhaust bolt that was stuck in here... Oh, boy. What did I do? Um, I used an automatic center punch to try to break it up in there. I used um, penetrating oil and let it sit for a while. Uh, a hammer. Um, these exhaust bolts are just um, basically the hardest steel you can imagine. Uh, a drill bit, left hand and right hand both did nothing to get it out of there. And in the end, um, it was just the, the banging and uh, eventually a pair of vice grips. Um, a, an, an actual good you know pair of vice grips that really grabbed on there. Um, through the little guard thing, and um, I guess it'd be here, and uh, and twisted it off that way. But it's leaking bar oil. I mean, just so somebody's been in this before. Obviously, um, it's got the wrong hardware all over it, and uh, so we'll get in here and just kind of start taking stuff apart. Good night. Okay, well that's one good thing. I guess these are supposed to be captured. Yeah, 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 that's good. I like captured nuts. Captured screws. Yeah, Husqvarna, I think, was one of the first people that started doing the captured stuff like that. That's good. But now i got to go to the saw shop and get some captured screws that are probably going to cost me about... Three dollars a piece, but yeah, like I was saying, I mean, you go to taking something like this apart in your shop, like I am here, and you just see—I mean, I want to blow this out, and it's just 
I don't want any of this in my shop. So I'll blow this out and then we'll come back and um, start taking it apart a little bit further. Yeah, one of the trickiest parts about any of these um, chainsaw rebuilds is figuring out like which way is righty tighty and lefty loosey on the you know either side of the crank. Um, they were nice enough here to uh, to put an arrow on there and I've actually scribed that in like on my 031 um, so this is a lefty no righty no it just doesn't let's see here lefty tidy yeah lefty tidy <laughs> righty Lucy and it looks like a yeah this is this is a fine thread here so I've read somewhere that uh, you need to kind of be cognizant of the way that your clutch is moving. Now, I think this is one of the earlier ones with the single spring. I mean, there's there's no clutch on here. I'm assuming there's supposed to be a, a centered, you know, clutch material on there. I, again, we're going through, we're looking for all the parts and pieces that we now need to go online and try to find. Um, but, uh, you know, just making sure everything is in tip-top shape. I think I'm probably going to, yeah, see this is eaten through around there, so I'm going to want to try to find one of those. Plastic clutch, or I'm sorry, plastic sprocket. This thing is, is kind of beat up and damaged. Um, this sprocket is probably not great either. Power Mate 387. So it's a standard size, 387. Nothing wrong there. Get our bearing off of there. Okay, and then, yeah, as you're looking over, you know, of course, your saw here. Um, yeah, keep some paper towels handy, keep your pick handy, because like all these are just going to be full of crud. And you can just wipe it down on a paper towel there if you got one handy. And this is really confusing. I don't know what's going on with that thing. But we've got, it's, it's completely... <laughs> It's completely missing the AV mounts up here. There's supposed to be bolts uh, here and an AV mount uh, here. So there's three on each side. Um, you've got one here up by the carburetor on either side and then on, along the bottom here. This one's completely screwed up. That one, I don't know yet. Oh, it's missing. Okay, so another bolt missing there from the AV mount um, here. Okay, so there's an AV mount bolt up under this, so I'll get this plastic off of here, and then another one, yeah, underneath on this side of it. So how does this come off? Um, yet another roadblock here. So when I get really anxious about a, um, when I get really anxious about a, a bolt coming out, I do actually have good tools that I pull out, but. This is, so what happened here? I went and tried to use our um, four millimeter. That's too small. I went and tried to use the five millimeter. That's too big. I got out the Klein tools, thinking maybe something was a little off with my Allen wrenches. Um, that proved to be fruitless. And now I'm finding that it's actually an SAE. So apparently I need to get an SAE socket set as well as a metric set and then a metric and standard in good tools. And then that way I've got everything. <clears throat> yeah, that's what she is. Why do I have American bolts in a very metric tool here. I don't know. But <clears throat> we're going to find out and see what kind of jug this is. 
Now I think I've got everything disconnected from the carburetor. If these will come out, sure, let's let's get them on out. Nope. All right, yeah. Tried twice. <clears throat> Yeah, these uh, these are very SAE. Uh, what are we at here? Three sixteenths. So I mean, somebody has been into the saw. These should definitely not be three sixteenths, right? Am I wrong? Let me know down there. Um, now, what is holding this carburetor in here? Nothing. Okay. All right, what do we see? We see... We see... Dang it! It's perfect! Oh, man! Once again, we have a... Um, once again, we have a... We have a perfect cylinder. And, uh... Just how well you can see inside of there. I don't have a light on the camera, but yeah, it's uh, it's looking good. I mean, really good. Okay, so let's see if we can get some numbers off of here, and maybe we can figure out what it is. This is kind of fun, <laughs> being in warmness. <laughs> and still being able to work on stuff. I don't usually work out in my shop when it's cold like this, except if I've got some, you know, machine job or something I'm running. But I've got the top end off, and I just wanted to make sure and measure our piston here. And we are 45, 46, 47, 48, 48 millimeter um, piston. Now this one had good compression, um, not extremely good, it's got some minimal wear. You can see where it's kind of shiny along the bottom. Um, my 365 had a little bit of that, but what you can do to just double check that is put it, you know, in the cylinder the way that it would be going and uh, try to wiggle it like back and forth. Oh, this one, this one does have. I don't know if you guys can hear that. This one does actually have some wiggle, so I would need to replace this piston regardless. But I've got some bigger plans for this one. This one looks like a stock. Um, it's got that SK 5035321 SK 1818-1. Um, this one's so we got a 48 millimeter jug on it that's apparently stock but it's been drilled out and tapped to a larger size which you know definitely concerns me um, but we'll leave that alone we aren't gonna mess with that one actually I've got a 52 millimeter big bore kit that we're gonna put in here um, okay where do I want to start I want to start with figuring out why this oil is leaking all over Jamie Christmas what the hell do I have to do to get this to stop, huh? Is that what you want? One of these, maybe? A little bit of that. Is that, is that helping? Okay, I think we've solved our problem there. And somebody may have put the wrong size bolt in there, and now it's just, I think that's a through hole to the oil back here. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, um gas tank and anti-vibe. I want to start there. Jeez, somebody has a runny nose. Ugh. All right, let's see here. What I'm looking at is a, a rig job that somebody did trying to fix this AV mount. Now, I'm not saying it's good or bad, but I'm definitely not saying it's good. Um, I need to get in here and 
basically I'm just trying to take as much of this plastic off of or this rubber off of here as I can so I can get at this bolt to see if I can actually um, unscrew it or if it's stripped or you know something's going on here with it there we go okay so I can maybe get a socket on there now so to say it's bad. It would almost be an understatement. But what? Let's guess here. Seven? It looks non standard. Oh, I have to go eight. No, oh, I grabbed six. There's seven. Nope. Eight? Yes. I, uh, well, hey, look at there. It turns. It came out. That is going directly in the garbage. Well, I mean, shoot, does it have the right threads on it? God, I'm a sucker for good threads. Oh, yeah, it's got good threads. Son of a gun. All right, well, I'm going to put this one in my pocket because I guess that's probably the same threads. Yeah, that's the right threads. Yeah, it's not the right length. All right, I'm gonna put this one in my pocket just so I know it's the right threads. So when I go to Ace Hardware tomorrow, I can find that one. Okay, next. Uh, I guess I just got the one left. Let's see here. Okay, and then to get the gas tank off, I guess you just kind of pull down and back. And there's my there's my gas tank grommet. It that doesn't. Well, I yeah, I guess that's that'll work. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, and then let's see. Is the fuel? I guess it's the linkage here. We'll just take the whole thing. Out. <laughs> oh, I thought I was done blowing stuff off. Far from it. Far <laughs> from it. <laughs> See, somebody, I think somebody tried to make their own AV mounts. We'll, uh, we'll, see, there's a real one. There's, um, part of one. Another part of one. <laughs> you have to laugh at this sort of stuff. Um, okay, well... I'm going to blow this off, and we'll be back to put these AV mounts on. Alright, let's take a look at what we got in store for this saw. Um, okay, so here we go. We've got an all-new AV mount kit. Please don't knock the Loctite over, folks. Thank you. Um, with these really nice tools that are supposed to, you know, affix on to the actual you know, way you're supposed to remove them and put them in. And then we've also got this, which has that TT made in Italy. I, what's, what's the name of this one? I don't know, but just looking inside of there, it looks pretty nice. Um, of course, it's got that same intake method for the vacuum with a little hole through the bottom of the cylinder there. And this stuff... I just want to give credit where credit's due. I just picked somebody on eBay, and this is Custom Chainsaw Parts up in Washington. 40, 40, 40, okay. So we're $80 all in all here uh, for a, a new piston, cylinder, and our AV bushing mount kit. So we're up to, we're up to 180 so far on what's gonna be a 70cc saw that's gonna be ported. <laughs> and I've got, you know, the timing wheel, um, we'll get all that hooked up when we get there, but this is going to be a pretty thorough video on everything you need to do with your junk saw from the pawn shop for a hundred bucks from the, uh, from the 80s. Oh, look at there, made in Sweden. Alright, well there's something made in Sweden anyway. Okay, let's see if these work, huh? So the smaller ones, 
can see it's that. Okay, are they only going to fit on the new ones? Or what's going on here? I don't want to down the guy's shop. Um, but if they don't fit, I guess they don't fit. Yeah, that fits. That fits perfect on the new ones. Um, so maybe these old ones are just a little wore out. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Need to blow it out again. Yeah, if I had all this stuff all over my floor, I would be an aggravated man. Okay, so there is um, one of the old ones. Still looks to be in pretty good shape. But look at these. These upper ones here are just completely broke off. And these are, I guess the smaller ones are up here too. Oh, when I was watching, uh, I watched the Tin Man video before I did this one. Because uh, he was saying, you probably want to just go ahead and put one in as you take one out up here on this linkage um, bar. But, um, yeah, let's just put that, put that new one just kind of right in there. Just go right back with it. <sighs> nope, I need to blow it out. Gonna be leaking air for the rest of the video, but that's okay. Got it blown out, cleaned out. Um, there we go. Okay, let's get the new ones in here. I guess it's two smaller ones, two small ones, and then a big one down here. Is that what we're seeing? So let's see. Yeah, big down here, two smalls up here. Um, yeah, let's just get these in here while we're down here looking at this stuff. Okay. Yep. Man, that's handy having the right tool um, to do this job. Again, that was custom chainsaw parts i just went on ebay and you know the this guy i bought more stuff from him you know without even knowing i tried to uh kind of order everything at once but you always find something something you missed somewhere along the way and um he's got really good shipping rates and everything no affiliation yet <laughs> if you want to sponsor me dude give me a holler um we will make it happen but yeah these are just filthy okay same on this side we'll get these changed out and then um i guess we need to figure out what size screw is gonna fit back into them and see if i've got any around here man these are <laughs> pretty uh pretty bad shape getting these in and out okay um yeah i'll get all these changed out and see if we can find some hardware to at least get this back on the body of the thing. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do some new fuel line too while I'm in here. I um, thought this was supposed to be a custom deal. Anyways, I ordered a couple new fuel lines for this thing because um, I figured it was going to look something like that. I think we're uh, ready here. I went ahead and installed a new fuel line. I think there's supposed to be a different type that kind of has like a, I don't know. I ordered one. It looks different. It's got something in the middle of it that kind of conforms and I guess is supposed to hold it through that slot. But this is nice and tight fitting. Um, you can see here, this is the same size line. And it, you know, it was pinched down right there as it was coming through. So I just want to make sure that I'm getting this through there as, uh, as we're going in. Um, and then that boot, that's going to be our, our other problem here. 
There's a boot. And you guys, you guys saw it there. It's uh, right under here. That's got to, uh, that's got to align in here um, when it comes together. And put this kind of through there. That's our throttle linkage. And I mean, it's. Uh, if we want to look at it from the top side there. Yeah, so it's um, just kind of working it in. Yeah, that looks alright. Okay, and then, let's see, I was able to find some screws to go in here to hold all this together. I don't know. I shouldn't need a washer, should I? And what's our friend? Oh, it's locked up. You know it is. Oh, oh. these not M5s? Yeah, see? There, that one grabbed and it was cross threading in there. But luckily, um, you know, I was Johnny on the spot there, hand tightening. And um, all right, so that was set at 11 on this tool, and I don't know if you guys were looking at actually getting one of these. This is—I've had this for probably man 10 plus years. I think I got it in—I think I got it in 2012. Uh, DCF 610. Man, that thing—it's a beast. It, it's held up. I'm telling you. Okay, so let's continue with the Loctite situation. Oh, I think I think I filtered a line there. Oh, I felt wrong. Okay. Close though. I gotta kinda push down. And Alright, my Loctite is upset at me. I can feel it. Easy Loctite, easy. Okay, I think we're about set up here. Um, I've got the cylinder uh, bolted down, no base gasket. We're going to take readings here without a base gasket because I'm thinking I want to use the moto seal. Um, I've been hearing a lot of good things about that. So I think we'll, uh, we'll check our squish with, uh, with no... Oh boy, she's a little tight. Okay, there we go. Yeah, we got it. Oh, she's thin. She's thin. Look at there. Let's see what we got here. What do we got? Whoa, thirty thousandths. Let's take that measurement from a couple different spots here. Make sure we're all the way up against the side of the cylinder. Check it again. Alright, so now we're reading 25 thousandths. So we're getting better. Um, I'd like to see that at 20 thousandths, but let's see here. Yeah, 25. Hmm. Okay, well, let's see here. What's our next step? Well, we want to record everything in our book here. So, we've got some notes that we're taking. We've got a fresh um, build here. And I need to uh, probably write that down. Alright, so we were at 25 thousandths. So, squish 0 0.025, where we would like to be closer to 20 thousandths. All right, next we're going to check exhaust duration. And the way that we check that, and 
Real quick, I wanted to talk to you about like what sort of setup do you need for timing. Now, I went online and I got basically the cheapest um, self-tightening chuck I could find, but one that has like a few of these adapter pieces. And that way I could like try to adapt something so the timing wheel could go on here. And what I ended up... <laughs> I mean, this was just a pain. I uh, ended up grinding it down. It was for like a um, impact, I think, and it was super hard. Um, I tried a couple different ways to uh, get it to mount on there, but it, anyways, it works. <laughs> All right, so here's the timing wheel that we have, and you're probably not going to be able to see it real well, but um, I've got it. A, about right at top dead center like right in there somewhere right and I've seen other people use like a like a stop thing that goes in there um, I like to use a I, I like to use an actual piston stop it's a little bit more definite for like we're actually stopping and it's gonna stay in the same spot so all right, let's look here. Um, here's top dead center, and we are, let's see, 37 degrees off. And then from top dead center on the other side, we are 30, let's see here, 39. So we need to come over here just a little bit to uh, 38. So there's 38. Back around this side, there's 38 and a half, there's 38, and 39, so we need to be like 38 and a half, there we go, right there. Sorry if you can't see this. Trying to get you a good vantage. Okay, um, 38 and a half. Back around to um, 38. 38 and a half. 38 and a half. Okay, so now we know where top dead center is. It's just easier for me to, to use one of those. I know, I know where top dead center is for sure now. Okay, so now we need exhaust, um, and, and I look at everything in terms of duration, right? Duration is king, so I'm measuring everything in terms of duration. So I'm going to look through my um, exhaust here, and it's coming this way from top dead center. I've got this wrench down, so it's not moving, and so I'm going to come down here and wait for my first ray of light. It's not real even, but right there. Um, so this goes 0 to 90, and then 90 to 0, right? So my duration is going to be from, from bottom dead center and then back up to top dead center. And the way this wheel works, you've got 0, 45, 90, 45, 0. So you're working your way up to 90 and then back down from 90. And I'm landing... Yeah, we're still there. Um, I'm landing right at 72. So I'm 72 degrees away from bottom dead center. So I just multiply that by 2 um, to give me, what, 100, or I'm, I'm sorry, 75, 76, 77. All right, so 77 degrees from bottom dead center. 77 degrees from bottom dead center, uh, which gives us a duration of 150. But all you have to do then is pull out your calculator because I'm going from bottom dead center, uh, 78 times two, um, nope, uh, 75, 76, 77, 77 times two, 154. Okay, 154 exhaust duration, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, 154 is fine. Okay, 77 and 154, alright. So now, we're going to continue going the way that the chain spins. 
right it goes away from you on top so we're turning this this way until we see our transfers open right there all right so now we're at let's see 59 so 59 from bottom dead center So blow down 59 degrees from bottom dead center is going to be 77 minus uh, 59, let's see, 78, 60, 70, 8. So we're at 18 degrees. At 59 degrees, 77 minus 59, um, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. Yeah, 18. 18 degrees of blowdown. I'd like to see. Um, I'd like to see more than that, which is a good thing because we can raise our exhaust roof from 77 to uh, like 78, and that's going to give us two more degrees duration. So that'd be 156. Um, it's going to give us one more degree of blowdown, which would be 19. I may just go crazy on this one. I don't know yet. Alright, so let's look at intake duration. Um, intake, we want to keep rotating the same direction as the chain spinning, right? And now we're looking at our intake, and we're looking to see when that skirt clears. Right there, it's just starting to open, and we are at from top dead center. Again, everything is in terms of duration. Um, 71. 71 and it looks like 71 and a half but we're just going to put 71 um, seven degrees from top dead center so that is going to then be 142 uh, 142 duration 142 now that's not very stout but let's keep going here and see where we kind of end up See, doing it this way, now look, I can just, so I'm at uh, 71, 71 and a half. Um, keep going the rotation of the chain until it closes right, right there. And we're right about 70. If I'm going the same kind of distance right when it closes, yeah, we're right at 70. So it's actually, instead of just multiplying by 2, um, it's a degree difference, so it's actually only 141 duration. So, 70 close, uh, and 70 close is bef after top dead center. So we're actually at 141 duration. Alright, so there's our Italy Tech... Uh, 52 millimeter, we got 25,000 squish with no base gasket. We got exhaust duration 154. We got blowdown 18. Uh, we got intake duration of 141. So, intake is going to be the big problem. I want to shoot for the, this to be somewhere uh, exhaust uh, around 158. Um, that's going to 1, 2, 3, 4. So, that's 2 degrees. So that'll give me 20 degrees of blowdown. That's what I want. Blowdown equals 20 degrees. And then intake, I want to get up there about the same. Um, uh, 158. So I've got a bunch of degrees to go there. And there's two ways to get there. Um, lowering the deck of the intake there is one. But I've got to go a long ways, right? Um, 158 divided by 2 is uh, 79. So I've got to go from 70 all the way up to 79. And I, I think I'm going to take some meat off of the piston. So, um, so I can lower a, a few degrees. And then, um, and then cut piston. So that's my plan for getting to uh, for getting to 158 there. Okay, that is uh, yeah, that's my plan. 
All right, while I'm waiting on my, uh, my mandrels to come so I can skim off the bottom of that jug, I am going to focus on cleaning up this, um, cleaning up this piston. And like the hard edges, like there's a hard line right there, uh, that's going to restrict air. There's also a big cast mark on the inside of these windows here and um, lines that kind of come down through the piston and just a hard lip right there. So I'm going to clean all this up. Um, the order of operations for this process is basically um, you've got to have your jug and your squish where you want it before you really do anything. So I'm waiting on some UHMW, but I'm going to get this cleaned up in the meantime. I'm also going to do uh, a cool trick um, where I do use some layout fluid, run it in the cylinder, and then I can kind of lay out, you know, where this is lined up in the, in the piston, where this edge is, you know, how far this is across here so I can work on my transfers and work to, um, you know, the piston size. So, anyways, uh, that's going to be part one of advanced porting for beginners. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, get out there, have you some man time too. Subscribe and check out the next episode where we... Um, you know, start using that layout fluid and actually start grinding in the cylinder once we get our squish where we want it.